Hello. During this tutorial, what we're going to be discuss, uh, what we'll be discussing is some chassis sim housekeeping, and basically some various bits and pieces that you need to be aware of when using chassis sim. The first thing to be aware of when using chassis sim is that chassis sim can be used in two modes. One is light mode, as you can see that we've currently got been as indicated by this little green bar here, and the other one is standard mode. Now. Let me just toggle between um, standard and light mode, and then that's done in view. Toggle between light and standard dialogues. And as you can see, this grey icon down here has come up um, that now indicates we're in standard mode. Now, in standard mode, standard mode gives you full access to all, uh, to the complete power of the chassis sim, uh, to the complete power of the chassis sim vehicle model. In light mode, and I'll just go back here, and I'll just go back, toggle between light and standard dialogues. Basically, what we have is that we have a um, uh, is that we have a uh, is that we have a reduced number, a simpler number of options. This is ideal for once you've done the hard work in setting up the model, and you're ready to basically just choose from a number of predefined um, uh, for, from a number of predefined springs and bars. And often, once you get used. To, alter, uh, uh, to alternating between both modes, it's actually a very, very powerful tool um, between, it's actually a very, very powerful tool that will allow you to get the most out of chassis sim. Now, where the light mode comes in is basically when we're playing with vehicle templates, and we'll cover that, in a, and um, we'll cover that in another tutorial. The next topic I want to discuss is basically specifying the units you want to use. To do that, you simply go to View, Select Units to Use. And as you can see, this dialog comes up here that allows you to select various units for spring rates, various units for um, your spring and bump rubber lengths, forces for, uh, uh, you can either express your forces in newtons or pounds force, suspension geometry lengths, mass corner weights, track wheel base units, etc., etc. And once you're happy with that, you just simply click on OK, and that basically applies all the units. Now, the units you have specified here will always be reflected when you're going through and changing an appropriate version, uh, uh, when you're changing the appropriate chassis and parameters. So, for example, let me just click on adjusting the suspension geometry. As you can see, we've selected um, units in millimetres, and as you can see, we're basically displaying our units here in millimeters. If they are not displayed, if in doubt, uh, if in doubt, they will be the units you have specified. In uh, uh, they will be the units that you have specified in the view select units dialog. The last thing I want to discuss is basically toggling between asymmetric editing mode and um, symmetric editing mode. Now currently, as you can see, we're in symmetric editing mode. What that means is that, say for instance, we click on the um, rear, uh, say we click on the rear right spring, and we make a change, say we decide to um, up the spring rate to say, in this example, to 160 newtons per millimeter. That will also be reflected on the right hand, on um, the right hand side. Now, uh, if you need to edit asymmetrically, you go to toggle symmetric editing flag. It'll come up um, with a um, warning uh, with a dialog box saying what mode you're about to enter. And here, where symmetrical editing is off, and you'll see in this little um, in this little uh, bar, toolbar down here, you'll see asymmetric editing. In this case, we now have the ability to edit each side independently. Obviously. This is ideal for if you're running oval setups or if you needed to explore some particular bit of um, asymmetric setup. However, for those of you using symmetric setups, I would advise always use symmetrical editing on the simple principle there's just less chance, um, uh, there's just less chance for error.